Let's um, get more into today's market action tech. So you mentioned before getting wrecked today. Let's bring in Tom Lee of Fundstrike Global Advisors. Tom, great to have you with us, especially on a day like today. You have been an ardent bull through all of this, and rightly so. So what did you make of Janet Yellen's comments? And what would it do to your bullish thesis if the Fed really started throwing out the notion that rates may not stay this low for, for, this, for as long as we had predicted? Um. I mean, I think her comments are appropriate, but I, you know, days like this are noisy. Um, you know, we're only 12 months out of a depression. I'm not sure in the history of economic monetary policy, central banks tighten so quickly after coming out of, the, of a, de a depression event. Um, so, I mean, I just think, you know, it, there is going to be higher rates in the future, but talk of inflation triggering the Fed to chase that. I think it's noise. Yeah, and Tom, listen, you've been steadfast, and I think you're going to continue to be. Um, but is it is it time now to sort of take a reallocation approach? In other words, Karen mentioned it, Steve yeah. has mentioned it. You know, some of these high flyers have sort of not gone by the wayside, but clearly giving a lot back. I mean, is it time now to readjust and to look at things that have been out of favor and now seemingly becoming in favor? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when we talk to our clients, our institutional investors, they're more than market weighted in work from home and mega cap growth and FANG. Part of it is liquidity, but the market's super crowded in, in those names and, and they've been awful and they're absolutely the wrong stocks to own if the economy's reopening. So, you know, I think, you know, we're still in the camp that this s and is going to make a move towards 4,400 first. Uh, before summer. And then I think, you know, as Grasso points out, probably um, then we could have a correction towards the 200 day. But the real bludgeoning is going to take place in that mega cap, stay at home, fang, you know, digital world complex of stocks. And I think the real opportunity is, is really in things that are pro economy or, or what we call epicenter stocks. Hey, Tom, when I've favored the chemical names to the point that Guy just brought up to the restarting the economy, you favored energy names. And on the back of oil, uh, seeming as though it wants to break out, would you be in E&P? Would you be in refiners? Would you be in services? Where do you see the opportunities here with all of them being up and services being up the least out of that bunch? Um, yeah, interestingly, I, I think the entire energy complex is a buy. Um, because, you know, oil, the, the, structurally, the industry and also the energy companies are really seeing the best supply-demand alignment in more than 10 years. And now oil looks like it's really retraced a lot of its decline. In, and if it breaks through 68, you know, then reaching $80 by the summer is, is, would be pretty reasonable. And a group like the Oil Field Services, which is at like 190 today, it's never been below uh, 450 if oil's at 70, and it's never been below 600 if oil's at 80. So the group could, you know, just OIH, for instance, could almost triple up 250% and a move to oil that is really in line with the Goldman target of $80 oil. So I think energy is, is really one of the best risk rewards right now, but it does tie into the idea that commodities are gonna benefit from a reflation move, but it's not creating the kind of inflation that the Fed needs to react to. Tom, I was wondering if you can, uh, you know, give us a little more nuance uh, behind that run to 4,400 and then that pull back down to the 200-day moving average. That run to 4,400, is that where the biggest sort of um, drawdown in, in, the, in the big cap tech names happens, uh, the high flyers, the high valuation names? And then what happens on that big pullback? Do we see another, another churn rotation into them? <clears throat> Uh, that's right, Melissa. I mean, it's, I think it's, we're in a tricky moment. I think that's why people are seeking protection in the VIX because the S&P has been laboring, um, even small caps, and only a, few, a handful of sectors really look healthy. But we also know investors are really cautiously positioned. And we also know that companies have delivered guidance that's pretty impressive, and especially for some of the cyclical groups. And I think once some of the tail risks come off, I think right now people are focused on the risk from India. And if India sort of starts to see an improvement and the catastrophe, both from a healthcare and an economic perspective diminish, then I think it's back to risk on. And that's how we propel to 4,400. Mm. And it's not, a, it's not really you know, a level that's uh, 
I mean, look, a lot of people have S&P targets around that. I just think it's going to happen mid-year. And then clearly it makes sense that we are going to have a some sort of correction this year, something deeper than the 7% we've had. And I think a 10% would just touch the 200-day from 4,400. All right. Tom, always great to speak with you. Thank you. Thanks. Tom Lee of Fundstrat. Um, that call on oil is a tremendous one from Tom Lee. XLE up potentially 250% if oil does get to $80. So not pricing in right now a recovery to $80 um, a barrel, Tim. What do you think? I, t- Tom's comment about the structural uh balance in the oil and gas sector is really important and where we haven't been in a long time because oil companies haven't had capex haven't been able to deploy haven't been able to grow at all costs like they did a decade ago uh, then you had supply disruptions now you've actually got a case where you're going to have demand outstrip uh, at least some of the supply dynamics in the short term in other words taking some of the oversupply out of the market if you see continued move in inflation you want to own energy best of breed names Talked about OIH. How about Schlumberger and Amom Long? So people know I like that name. Uh, CVX, best of breed on the integrateds. And then EOG, uh, to me, is really the best of, of those that are also heavily involved in, in the renewables business. But best of breed, great balance sheet, innovative company. Those are names that, that have had a good run. OIH and oil services have really lagged this move in energy. So that was the point just made. And I would, I would agree with that. In a world in which Tom Lee is right, Guy Adami, what happens to some of these tech names that have posted actually pretty decent earnings, maybe even upside surprises, and not done anything in terms of stock moves or gone lower? Well, well, the two names you're talking about embedded in there, I think, is Amazon. And again, kudos mm-hmm. to Steve. But I mean, Amazon traded right up to the September high of 3,500 and change and apparently has failed. Why do I say apparently? Just look at the last two days price action, classic double top. I mean, it should find support around 29.50. That's been support before. Same thing with Apple. Again, Apple, we talked about it the night of earnings that when it was trading 138, I said, you know, the stock should be a lot higher given this report. And I didn't know where it was going to go, but it didn't really react. And now here we are at levels. 122 is support there. And then the last thing, and it's sort of the elephant in the room, and I'm sure I'm going to get added at by everybody, Quite frankly, you know, 10 years ago, Janet Yellen can comment all she wants about interest rates. In her current role, she shouldn't really be saying anything about interest rates. If you think about it, that's the gorilla in the room or the 800-pound elephant, whatever you want to call it. So the fact that she's even commenting to me (laughs) is problematic. But that's me. Well, it's interesting in her sort of clarification of it. She said, you know, if there's anybody who's sensitive to to Fed independence, it's me. If there's anybody who understands fully the implications of actually making the statements in the first place, it should be Janet Yellen. And yet here we are. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.